Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A few years back, when the, the last financial meltdown took place, the Advertising Agencies Association of India had a <clears throat> seminar on the subject in Bombay. And uh, I'd like to repeat the name of that seminar because I think it fits in with what we are going through at this point of time. It is Why Waste a Good Recession? And uh, a lot of us laughed at it and thought they were being too clever by half, etc., etc. Unfortunately, what we found is that those companies who leveraged a good recession did well, and those companies who panicked and uh, actually did the traditional stuff which Mr. Bajaj was just talking about, didn't perhaps do so well. Uh, one of the issues raised in the, uh, uh, in the sort of brief up to this particular session was, is it worthwhile changing vision, is it worthwhile changing strategy during times of uncertainty and during times of uh, difficulties? And if you were to look at various examples of companies around the world or organizations around the world, what we find is that those companies who stick to a vision and whose strategies are robust and whose strategies actually work across time never actually change their strategies. What does certainly happen is that they change tactics, they change logistics, they change supply chain possibilities, but in the long run, strategies are very, very rarely changed. But the issue is what is the short term and what is long term and uh, as the lead up to this seminar talked about is, is there a middle road? Is there something called the middle term in terms of strategies and visions? Successful companies throughout the world have actually, dis have actually apart from the traditional aspect of having uh, a three layered goal and three layers of uh, uh, new product innovations, the short term, the medium and the long term, what successful companies actually do is have three levels of planning and three levels of actually strategic formulation for the short term, for the medium term, and for the long term. But above all else, most successful organizations have do one thing which is perhaps a bit dif different, is that they tend to game and plan for recession, they tend to game and plan for difficult times well in advance. A lot of these games can be called corporate uh, Forecasting can be called long-term planning, can be called pie in the sky, whatever you want to call them. But the reality is that organizations who actually have gamed them in advance and have then worked out a strategy of handling particular situations, locked it up in a safe and brought it out, dusted it up when uh, situations actually happen, have done far better and have been far more successful than companies who start thinking about what to do when problems actually hit the economy rather than uh, having decided what to do in advance and therefore they have a distinct advantage over their competitors and people in other uh, businesses. <clears throat> when it comes to difficult times, <clears throat> when it comes to recessionary times, the first thing which most people do is let us cost co uh, cut costs. <clears throat> and when we talk about cutting costs, the first thing most people do is that uh, we will not fly business class from now on, we will fly economy class, we will have video conferences rather than we will travel, we will only recruit during uh, absolute emergencies and so on and so forth. And at the end of it, it's great leadership, it shows that you're leading from the front, but the actual impact in terms of uh, the bottom line is next to nothing. However, there is another view, another option, which some successful companies have taken, which is, can we spend our way out of a recession? Can we spend our way out of difficulties? And when I'm talking about spending, I'm not talking about <clears throat> uh, spending unnecessarily, but if we were to invest <clears throat> in capital goods, if we were to invest in plant and machinery, which takes a lot of time to actually set up, if we were to invest in new factories, if we were to invest in advertising and promotion of our brands, during times of uncertainty and difficulty, you'll find that most organizations worldwide, and certainly in this country, who have actually spent the way out of a recession have done a lot better than those companies who have pulled back, panicked, gone into their shells, and actually in the long run haven't done so well. Take a simple example of recruitment. Uh, recessionary times, difficult times, are probably the best time to recruit new talent because new talent is actually available. Uh, you, you talk about people leaving organizations, but 
A lot of successful companies, most of which are represented in this room, actually recruit to a very large extent and have been recruiting right just now, in fact, rather than stopping recruitment. Because at this point of time, you actually are able to get, and I'm putting it very coldly and cruelly, you're getting a damn good deal as far as people are concerned. Uh, there is one other difference between companies which have been successful and companies which have not been successful during times of uncertainty, and that is having a portfolio approach. Having a portfolio of products, whether you're playing in the extreme upper end of a particular segment, whether you're in the service industry, or whether you're playing in a mass market consumer goods industry, it makes no difference. Having a portfolio approach has one major advantage, is that depending upon the circumstance and depending upon the economic times people are facing, people may actually uptrade or downtrade, but within your own brands, within your own set of offerings, rather than moving on to somebody else who is offering something else. Now this goes normally dead against what a lot of people talk about, about sticking to your knitting, having only core products, etc. But having a portfolio of services within a portfolio of brands or, or, or a portfolio of uh, categories within a particular brand or vice versa actually gives consumers the option to stay with her or his favorite brand and yet be able to manage limited resources when times are hard and times are difficult. Uh, Mr. Bajaj just talked about trying to be different rather than trying to imitate people. And I, I, I want to give you an actual example of what we've been through in the last 10 years in trying to set up uh, our FMCG businesses. Every single time we produced a product, which in blind form or branded form, we tested and was better than competition and was the best product in the marketplace in terms of quality, in terms of everything. Every single time we did that, we fell flat on our face and failed. And uh, we've been lucky, our failure rate has not been 90%, it has been a lot less, but nevertheless, it's, it's a reality. But every single time we came out with a product which was different, and that differentiation meant something meaningful to consumers, and we were able to communicate this, this meaningfulness and differentiation to consumers, we've had very, very large successes on our hand. Uh, we produce the best glucose biscuit in the country. The issue is so what? Uh, we didn't do too well. But then we created new categories for ourselves in a lot of our FMCG spaces where nobody else was actually there. Creation of uh, categories, some are mindset categories, some are physical product categories, and every single one of those categories have actually done well. And surprise, surprise, they're all recession proof. But the Me Too categories, the, commodity, the, co the commoditized categories, whenever a lean time came, whenever a difficult time came, actually started declining. We created a portfolio strategy in every single category we decided to go into, and the reason was very simple. We were brand new, we were idiots, we didn't know what the hell we were doing, so we played safe. But as a consequence of this playing safe and creating a portfolio strategy, what we realized is that we were able to hold consumers within our own brands, we were able to hold consumers within a range of ITC products, and as a consequence of that, we have been over the last 10 years and I hope continue to be the fastest growing FMCG company in this country. Thank you very much.